Okay, this week's video is going to be like the first in the series, where it's going to lead into next week's video. Right then, on the lathe I have a piece of beech that is six inches long and it's round about three and a half inches wide. Right, what we're going to do this week is a desk tidy and that will lead into next week's video which will be a box. Right, and I'm going to go through how to get the different fits next week on how to do a pop fit and stuff. But I figure if I get rid of the hollowing out of it in one video then if you're following along, you can just um, continue on from there for a box. Right, now, uh, as I said, I'm going to do a desk tidy. What this is, is I have a couple of snowman blanks left over from Christmas, so I'm going to use one of them. Um, so, uh, at the moment, it's a little bit wide for a desk tidy. So, first thing I'm going to do is turn it down a little bit in size. But uh, the important thing with desk tidy is your average pen is somewhere between five and a half and six inches long. So what you're looking for on a desk tidy is something that is basically around about five inches long. So a six inch blank at the start uh, gives you a good place to start from right. so uh, the start of this is really simple right basically make sure everything's flat right. get a finish cut on it Right. Now sand and finish the outside. It's really that simple. Right. Round it off, sand, get a decent cut and sand and finish the outside. So I'll do that and we'll be back in a second. Right then, just buffing the wax off the outside of this. Now, as I said, this series I'm keeping everything deliberately very simple. So I'm keeping the outside shape of this very simple. Um, for desk tidies, there's not really much of a shape you can put into them because they're just a cylinder that sits on a desk and holds pens. You can do things like do a load of them and put them together on a base, that kind of stuff. But uh, with this series, I'm just trying to keep everything as simple as possible. Right, so there we have the outside of it. Right. All nice and shiny. And then we get to the bit where it uh, can cause some consternation sometimes, which is hollowing it. Right, the first thing I need to do is flatten there off. So I'm going to grab a parting tool. Right, now remember what I said before about parting tools. When you're using a parting tool, this has to sit there. It can't start there on that slant. So measure it. All right, see the way I'm way too close there? Pull it back. Now I can touch that without uh, being on that slant. All right. Now we're flat, which is what we wanted. Right. Now take this out of the way. Right. And we'll start with the hollowing. Right now, this is where the fun part starts. There are a load of ways of hollowing. Right now, first thing I want to do is get rid of this. To give myself complete flat. Now then, as I said, there's a lot of ways of hollowing, right? Now, what I want is I want to hollow this 
down to about five inches because as i said the average pen is between five and a half and six inches long you want a little bit sticking out the top so it's easy for people to grab right and then as i said there's a load of ways of doing this right now the first way and the way we always used to do it was with a spindle gouge right and what you got to do is you got to make sure that the point of that spindle gouge is dead center there see where that's too low at the moment right so you got to make sure that the point of the spindle gouge is dead center and this is the way we always used to do it because we didn't have the equipment that we have now right see the way that's dead center right so lower the speed down and what i want to do is i just want to push straight in dead center right and i will bore myself a little hole and then i want to start back hollowing like that and i'm deliberately doing this slow and easy so that you can see what i'm doing right and what i'm doing is i'm cutting with basically that piece there of the gouge right just pulling it across You can see it there clear. See it there, the part of the gouge I'm cutting with. Until I get to the width I want. And then stop. And then borrow in a bit more. And do the same thing again. Out to the size you out to the size you want. Right? Now so that's the old way of doing it right now you can also do it by drilling if you have to have a jacobs chuck you can do it with drilling right now, now grab the biggest drill bit you have Right, this is one I use for fountain pens. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm going to use a fastener bit after this one. Right. That's automatically going to line up the center. Simply drill in. Right, I'll just drill in a little bit because I want to go through some other things. Right. Simply drill in. And this time I'm going to grab a ball gouge. Right. Now I'm too high for the ball gouge, so I need to drop that down a little bit. Right. And I'm going to use the exact same technique, the exact same spot on the gouge there. Right. And I'm just going to pull across. And I get do the same. It's the same movement again. Just pull across, pull across, pull across. Right now, if you happen to have fastener bits, if you have fastener bits, they make it so easy to do this kind of stuff. Right. So just putting it in now. Now, I have the biggest fastener bit I have on the chuck, right? Now, where did I put my measure? Right, there. right, I have my depth gauge set to five inches, right? Which will mean I'll drill down to there. Now, what I want to do is come over here and see where five inches is on this chuck. And it's just at the end of that bump. So what I need to do is drill all the way down to that bump. Now, if you're using a fastener bit, a good drilling speed is round about 400. And just drill away until I get to there. All right. 
remember, if you had remember the fastener bit, right, you can either put a bit extension on, right, which goes in between the bit and the Jacob's chuck, or you can just use your Jacob's chuck once the bit is wide enough, right. Now, um, what you should have is a way to make sure that that person that that chuck can't come out. Right, I don't actually have one. Right, but for safety wise, you should make sure that there's a way. Normally, on the back of a person on the back of a Jacob's chuck, there's a little hole like on this one right and what that's for is there's a small bar that goes through the back of your tail stock screws into that and it locks that bit in right it's right it's uh, i can't remember what they're called but you can get them right it's just for some reason i i've tried using them and they just don't work properly, in my opinion. But for safety wise, you should use one. But what you do have to do, no matter if you're using one of those bars or not, is you do have to keep pulling the bit out to clear it, because if in their fills the whole thing is going to jam and it could either break your piece it'll spin your bit or it'll spin this which means you won't be drilling anymore and if you try and drill too fast uh, it'll jam. Normally, what happens is this slips here. I'll show you now. Right. Right, I'm going to try and drill this too fast, and you'll see this will stop. The belt is actually going to start to slip. See? The belt starts to slip when you do that. So if that does happen to you, that this starts to spin, or that your chuck starts to spin or anything, you know what's wrong. You're, you're drilling too quickly. Now, if you're getting down into it and you get worried about, am I going too deep? Am I going to go through the end of it? Whatever. There's nothing wrong with stopping grabbing your depth gauge and double checking it right double checking you're going where you want to be right so there my depth gauge says i'm going that deep which is about right right uh this gap here on this depth gauge is an inch so my knot is at four and a half inches right which means that's that's round about five and a half inches right to that knot so I'm a little over five inches to there. It'll do fine. And looking here, my four inch mark, which is five inches deep, is right on that shoulder. So I'm still fine. Never be afraid to double check yourself. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down here through this edge to that shoulder. Too fast. Now I've just gone past that shoulder, so I'm at the right depth. Now you get this out of the way. Try and get into a habit of not leaving a drill bit in your tail stock because you will stab your elbow with it. Okay, now, clear out in there. 
If you have an air compressor, use it. If you don't, just use a brush or something. After you have drilled that out, it's not going to be that pretty in there. It's not going to be neat. Right. So what you need to do is clean it up. And the easiest thing to clean it up with is a ball gouge. Right. Now I've got the long handle one to give myself leverage. Now what I want to make sure of is that this edge here, right, I'm, I use an already screen as, as uh, anybody who's watched the channel for a while knows, right? This blade edge here is cutting on middle, right? Now that's cutting way down low, so it needs to come up a bit higher. Right. right, that's cutting on middle. Now, where I want to be cutting with is that blade edge and that little corner there. Right, so spin it up. And the same as with the spindle gauge, back hollow. Right, and what I'm doing is I'm going in and each time I'm going in just a little bit further and pulling out. So I'm having a look in to make sure that I'm actually cutting everything. That it's not kind of that shape inside, I want it straight wall inside. I'm good to about there, and then it starts to tail out a little bit. And again, blow it out again, or clean it out with a brush if you don't have a compressor. So you can see what you're doing. Right. That looks pretty okay to me. Right. Now, then, you will hear an awful lot of people talking about a box scraper as well. Right. What a box scraper is, is it's a small square scraper. Right. And what I use for a box scraper is a carboid, which I need to turn the head on because it's a chip bit rough. Now, what a box scraper will do is it will make sure that everything is squared up. Right. Sorry, I bumped that camera there. Right, same thing again. You want to make sure you're cutting on middle, which I'm slightly off of there, I think. Right. Now, I don't want to go in like that. Right. I want to go in at a 45 degree angle. If I go in like that, I stand a pretty good chance of getting a catch. Right. So I want to go slightly angled, or at about a, somewhere between 25 and a 45 degree. Right. And I just want to pull out. Start at the bottom, and just pull. All I just want to do is get rid of tool marks. Now the bottom, down at the very bottom, should have a pretty clean cut from the drill bit. Right. Now, because this isn't a box, that it's actually a desk tidy, I'm going to use the box scraper just to roll that edge a little bit. Now, if you want, you can roll that edge when you're sanding. It doesn't really matter. Right. Now it's a case of blow it out and sand in there. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. Right then, sanding the inside of these. All right, there's a few ways of doing it. All right, and I'll show you them. Right. Uh, I'm a big proponent of power sanding. Right. It, for me, because I need to do stuff quickly, it's the quickest way of doing it. Um, 
I can't use an inertia sander because of the Lyme disease. I can't grip it properly. Right, it basically flies out of my hands. Right, so if you ha if you do use power to, to sand, right, what you should be able to do to get the bottom of these is to put is to extend your mandrel out as far as you can, put your drill in, and you should be able to get the bottom of that nicely. Right? Now you're not going to be able to do the sides of the drill, right? So there's two ways of doing it, right? You can try and shove your fingers in, but if you look there, that's as far as my fingers can go down. I can sand down as far as there, but I won't get that last bit, right? So what you can do is, if you power sand, get one of your um, interfaces between the, an interface when you're talking about sanding is the piece of foam that has fluffy stuff on one side and who can loop who can loop on the other, right? Staple it to a stick. Put one of your sanding pads on and you can just go in and out with it like that. Well, this is spinning, of course. Right, you can just go in and out with it like that. And that will sand all the way down to the bottom here and all the way up to the top. Right. Or you can use the uh, split stick trick. Right. Which is basically get a rounded stick. I've had this one for years. I think it was a failed wand, actually. Right. Um... Cut a slit in it, you slide a piece of sandpaper in, right, watching your direction of turn. Now, that's going to be turning that way. So, if I put that in that way, that's going to unwrap the sandpaper, right? So, if I put it on that side, wrap it around the stick, put it in, right, turn it on, right, I can just push the sandpaper in and out doing that. And that will sand it. Right. And don't forget to do your rim. Right. right, so I'm going to continue on sanding this. And uh, I'll be back in a sec. Alright, just pumping the wax off the inside of this. Uh, as I said, this is uh, it's a desk tidy. They make quite good um, end of year presents for teachers, believe it or not. Uh, it's also the base for next week's video so that next week I can concentrate more on how to get the lid fit so uh, kind of if you're as I said if you're following on you can do this bit get used to doing this bit try it a couple of times and then next week's video when we're turning this into a box you can concentrate on the lid and how to get the fit you want, that kind of stuff, right? So, quite pretty inside. Right, now all we've got to do is part it off, and that is quite easy. There's just one little thing you have to do to it, right? And what you want to do is break this edge. See this edge here? You just want to break it a little bit so that it doesn't look like your. Um, like the thing is sticking into the desk and the simplest way of doing that turn the parent tool on its edge and just touch it and that will break that edge for you and now come in remember to cut at an angle right now i'm too close to the chuck there so i'll cut that there Right, break that edge again. Now all I want to do is take that really sharp corner off that edge. Right, so now that edge is broken. So now I'm going to go in and I'm cutting at that angle to make sure that this sits on a rim and not on something flat. Right. Now, something about parting off. You do not need to part off at some sort of crazy speed, right? Over a thousand is just nuts. You're asking for trouble, right? Part off where you feel comfortable, but not too fast. Right. 
And now it's just a case of sand and finish that. There's a load of ways of doing it. Um, I mentioned Pete's little clamp before for the, for a jaw. That's a great way of doing it. Uh, you just stick a sanding mandrel into it. Right. Um, I said there's a load of ways of actually doing it. Uh, you can hand sand it. You can use a palm sander. There's a load of ways of doing it. Right. Uh, my personal preference is I just stick a Jacob's chuck in there, clamp a sanding mandrel into it, and sand it. All right, so I'll do that, and I'll give you a better look at it. So I'll be back in a sec. All right, then, there we have it. A nice, simple, little desk tidy. I said it's a base for next week's video uh, for the new tourners who are following on this series. It's something that you can get ahead with uh, rather than doing the whole box in one video. You can get this part, which is a thing in itself. Right, it's a desk tidy, as I said. It's They're great for... Uh, teacher's gifts at the end of the year, right? And there's a few pens in it, as you can see. They just stick out the top, which is what you're looking for. You don't want to have to go down into a desk tidy to get stuff out. Um, so watch that height, right? Somewhere between five, five and six inches, right? That one's five inches deep because uh, pens are between five and a half and six inches long and you can see at the top of that that's my own personal pen uh that sticks out just enough to be able to just grab it and take it out right so as i said uh if you're following along try one of these it'll give you a bit of practice for next week when i'll be doing a box and i'll go through the type of lids and the type of fits you can get on lids so if you enjoyed that one i got out now if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video and i'll see you in the next one